Hey everybody, so something that has uh, really, I think, rounded out our, our treatments and our outcomes here at Regenerative Performance over the last probably uh, six to 12 months has been an incorporation, a really strong incorporation of treating fascial planes and uh, nerves in a more in-depth fashion. And so I wanted to take some time to kind of talk through that and what we've been seeing and, and kind of my approaches for that. So one of the things that is critically important for our connective tissue is the actual extracellular matrix. It is this the fascia that holds the muscles in place, that forms the ligaments and the tendons, and therefore attaches onto the periosteum on the bone. It allows these layers to slide between each other. It has openings that allows nerves, blood vessels, a whole bunch of stuff to go through it. And one of the reasons that the regenerative injections, I believe, uh, works is not because we are actually getting, you know, uh, improvement in uh, tendon morphology where we can actually see, uh, you know, a reduction in the size of a tear or something to that effect. But I actually believe that we're having a huge, huge impact on the fascia uh, and the extracellular matrix, which in turn allows these cells, you know, the tendon cells and the tendon itself to heal. One of the things that happens with chronic pain is that we get alterations in the fascia and the extracellular matrix such that sometimes things don't slide well on each other, right? You've got two fascial planes that they should be sliding against each other and they're not, which can result in uh, basically pain because one, you have uh, uh, nociceptors in the fascia, you have nociceptors in the muscle, and also that change in sliding pattern can therefore cause strain and sprain in other areas of the body because of those tensional pulls. And so one of the things that we've been doing is incorporating, checking fascial movements, fascial sliding, and actually uh, when a patient has pain, they go into a movement pattern that causes them pain and we actually apply some manual load to the fascia in order to see does that change their pain. So for example, if somebody has wrist pain and we take the fascia over here and when they get wrist pain when they do this, well, what if we move the skin and the fascia slightly towards the wrist? When we do that, does that make their pain better or worse or the same? Ooh, that made it worse. Okay, let's try this way. We pull downwards away from the wrist. Let's try it again. Eh, no real change. Okay, let's try a rotation. Okay, like bringing, rotating the, uh, the ulnar aspect towards the radial aspect. Let's try rotation. Then they do that. Oh, that makes it better. Okay, that keys me into different things that could be occurring between the fascia layers that makes me want to adjust my treatment options for that. One of those treatment options being uh, fascial plane hydrodissection. So basically we are looking for, we have two muscles or we might have a muscle and a ligament or a muscle and a tendon uh, or even uh, muscle, tendon, ligament, bone. Are these things sliding well against each other? And if not, let's place a needle between them Let's open up this space with a substance that is not a steroid. So some of the things we're uh, generally doing is going to be 5% dextrose, uh, quinton C minerals, uh, platelet-rich plasma, platelet-poor plasma, adipose-derived stem cell therapy with the uh, microfat and the nanofat, all these different things that actually can provide some healing capability to this tissue in addition to allowing these layers to slide a little bit, little bit better. One of the reasons that I absolutely love adipose uh, procedures for this, the microfat and the nanofat, is because the slipperiness of that adipose actually helps long-term with this fascial sliding. And so it's not just a temporary, okay, let's inject some fluid, open it up, okay, now it slides a little better, but what happens when that fluid gets reabsorbed by the body and it just sticks back together? Is it gonna stay? Well, the nice thing with adipose is that that stays for quite some time. There's, there's research that is showing that that can stay up to two years in areas that it's injected. And so because of that, I really like using small amounts of adipose in these fascial layers. And so that's one of the things that, that we've really been uh, playing with, experimenting with, and seeing some really, really uh, interesting results and, and positive improvements in cases where we might have struggled uh, in the past. And so that's super exciting. The other end of the spectrum in terms of uh, some of the deeper structures that we're treating is the nerves under nerve hydrodissections, under ultrasound guidance, performing these nerve hydrodissections. 
So again, going back to this fascia concept, right? We have the fascia has uh, areas in it where nerves are going to pass. Sometimes, a lot of the times, these are actually in fascial planes. And so if we're having a fascial plane that's not sliding well, and you have a nerve that's traveling through that, you can actually get some friction on that nerve, which causes inflammation. Uh, you could have some tethering of that nerve, uh, which increases the stretch or shearing force on that nerve, which can cause inflammation and pain. You can also have compressive forces on those nerves, which therefore can also cause uh, uh, neurogenic inflammation and pain. And so under ultrasound guidance, we are finding these areas where there might be nerve entrapments or uh, a, a basically an entrapment neuropathy. And we are injecting, again, those, those fluids that are uh, nutritive, healing, uh, you know, supporting the body to heal. Things like adipose and microfat and nanofat. We're doing platelet-rich plasma, uh, platelet-poor plasma sometimes, uh, quinton C minerals, D5W, a whole bunch of different things that we have uh, in our tool bag, depending on what's going on with the case, to create a change where we can actually create some space around those nerves through those layers so that way we do a non-surgical decompression and we can help to improve the nerve mechanics we can help improve the uh, uh the the pain from the patient and uh just it, overall it helps to round out some of our other therapies that we're doing for tendons ligaments joints fat pads uh, all that type of stuff so uh, that in a nutshell is our summary of uh what we are doing with our our fascial plane hydrodissections and our nerve hydrodissections. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments, wherever that is. Like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you later.